by the Minister for Energy that our country has made a major breakthrough in our oil exploration. In the Western countries, there are things that make sense to the leaders of those nations. Power, rule, and how their countries will influence other countries. But welcome to my country and welcome to Africa, where the resources that are discovered in our countries are only beneficial to those that are in power. I have a reason to saying this. In the Western countries and mostly in the European countries, when some resources are discovered, and I mean the natural resources including the crude oil, the diamonds and the gold, once they are discovered, the country and its leaders work on formulating the correct way to pump these resources to helping the nation and its citizens. But when it comes to Africa, these resources are used to build up somebody who is in power. They are used to build up families that are in power. In the year 2011, a discovery was made in a country in East Africa called Kenya. And the discovery was that crude oil had been spotted by the Tulo, which is a British oil extraction company, that oil now was discovered in Trukana County in Kenya. And now Kenya was on the verge of becoming a oil producing company, a oil producing country, I'm sorry. And Kenyans got hope. The people from the region of Trukana County, which is among the most neglected counties in Kenya, had seen the glimpse of hope. People were happy. After the discovery was made and the then president of Kenya, Mwai Kibaki, stood in a nation podium addressing the media and declared that he had received the news that Kenya was on the verge of becoming a oil producing company after crude oil discovery was made in Trukana County. The then company that was given the work of extraction of this oil was the Tulo British Company. But since 2011, today is 2023, over, 20, over 11 years, 12 years since the discovery was made, there is no tangible reason for us to beat our chest as the citizens of this great nation we call Kenya to say that we have benefited from these resources that God had blessed our country with. Allow me to give you an example and to date a few countries from the Middle East that discovered the production and the existence of oil in their countries which has benefited their citizens so much. Back in the days, Countries like Saudi Arabia were the laughingstock of the world. They were given as examples of countries where somebody can never reside in. But due to the discovery of oil and crude oil in their countries, countries like Saudi Arabia now are, are, are ranked among the top leading uh, exports for crude oil in the world making this country among the countries that reign in the superpowers of the world because they have made their citizens live a happy life because of the discovery of crude oil in their countries. A country like Egypt, it's a country in Africa, but mostly regarded as a country in the Middle East. Egypt is a country that right now can be termed as a developed country. The reasons why? It's because Egypt has production of crude oil, uh, uh, production of oil in their country. The military of Egypt can never be compared to any African military, uh, uh, any African country military. The reason I'm saying this is because 
these people have acquired all these resources because they discovered that their country had crude oil and so they used the resource that they had been given mostly their leaders to make sure that they have grown to a certain point but kenya after it was discovered rumor came in that now the leaders and those in power after the first shipment was flagged by the then president of Kenya, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, to Mombasa. Rumor had it that a, a tunnel was being built to move oil from Trukana to Lamu and to the coastal regions where the oil will be now exported out of the country secretly. But we never heard of that and what happened with that. We saw President Uhuru Kenyatta flag the first shipment of the crude oil from Trukana and mostly from Lokichari. It was said by the Tulo company that over 5,000 barrels of crude oil would be produced from Trukana every day. Do you know this oil, only this resource would make Kenya a very, very rich country. But because of the people that were in power then and right now, they have resulted to use these resources for themselves. The first shipment was to be exported to China and it was exported and China paid a total of 12 billion US dollars as it is believed. This was a lot of money. But the money was said that it was supposed to cater for the losses that the government had incurred during the process of extraction of this oil and also it was supposed to pay the Tulo Oil Company for the losses and the expenses that they had incurred during the extraction of the oil in Trukana. Right now, over 12 years, this oil right now is being exported out of the country secretly and also new uh, petrol stations and companies have come up in the country who use the same product that is produced in our country, but these companies are held by individuals in our country. I bet you understand where the point where I'm coming from. Ruby's Energy Kenya. It's a company that has taken over the, the petrol station businesses in the country. It is a company that is rumored to be linked to the Kenyatta family. The Kenyatta family is the family of the former president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, and also the first family linked to the late president, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. And rumor has it that they own the Rubis company. Yeah, if you dig deep, you will realize that Rubis company is, hold by diff is owned by different shareholders. But deep down in that Rubis company, the Kenyatta family and the B. Watt family. The B. Watt family is the family of the late Nicholas B. Watt because Rubies absorbed a certain company so that it would become what it is. It absorbed the, the Kenokobil business of oil supplying in the country. So right now, rumor has it that the Biwot family and the Kenyatta family linked together are the ones that are controlling the Rubies Kenya, uh, the Rubies energy business. And that's why the prices of petrol and fuel in our country during the reign of pres the late president, not the late, the former president of Kenya, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, always shot to the skies every now and then until we found ourselves to this certain point. But why should oil prices always be going high in a country that is termed as the first country in East Africa to have been linked to the production of crude oil? The crude oil has its cartels that have benefited big time with this. And that's why certain governments that are coming in, 
If the government of the current president of Kenya, William Ruto, is to exploit the chances of the cartels that are linked to the mining and extraction of crude oil in Trukana, then we can save this nation from the verge of collapsing economically because we are the verge of collapsing economically if we continue going down this path that we are going as a country. You understand the point where I'm coming from? The, it was named in Gamia 1 and Gamia 2 in Trukana. The, the oil production company, the, the oil production process in Trukana. You know, when we, we give examples and relay our details to the other countries, sometimes we get surprised. You know, I don't know what is very different with us countries from this side of ours. You know, we are Christian countries. But let me give you examples. The Arab countries, the Muslim countries, these countries do not like corruption. And the ones the leader is found corrupt, they have to pay either with, with their life, either with the life of their families, or they should spend the rest of their lives in confinement. You get the point where I'm coming from. Come to the countries that we embrace Christ and we are Christians. Yeah, for us, we have made corruption something that is, it's normal. We have, uh, we have seen corruption as if it's normal. That's where we go wrong. If a leader is arrested and also termed as a corrupt individual, they should spend the rest of their lives in prison. The countries like Japan, these are countries that they worship the who they worship. They don't care whether you talk or what you say about them. But once a leader is found guilty of corruption, the prosecutor should not come to condemn the leader. The person that has been found guilty of corruption should either take their own life or should either cut their own tongue. That is Japan for you. The same thing to Saudi Arabia. If somebody in Saudi Arabia is found guilty of corruption, the punishment is death. If we embrace such ways of dealing with some leaders, then we can go far as a country. Go to a country like Nigeria. Nigeria is the number one production of oil in Africa. But also as the people living in the lowest living standards in this, con in this continent. Reason being, Nigeria produces oil, but oil benefits those in power, not the citizens of the nation. Small countries like Algeria, like Tunisia, they're living big. Reason being, these are African countries, but, but with their connection to the Arabic countries and the Middle East countries. A country that has stood its ground and has made Christianity something to embrace a country like Israeli. The Israel country, they did not have all the resources that some countries in Africa have. But Israel is a superpower by itself right now because of how they have embraced with dealing with certain leaders. If a leader comes, if your concern is not for we, if your concern is not for the nation, that's where we kick you out. And that's when it comes to the matter of even the police. You know, if you have listened or learned about history and about the superpowers countries, you will realize that this country, every citizen, every citizen embraces their nationality with great sense because they are proud to be citizens of those countries. A citizen from Iraq, a citizen from Saudi Arabia, a citizen from Syria, a citizen from Jordan, a citizen from those war-stricken countries, a citizen from Lebanon, they embraced their nationality. Reason being, these people want the best for their country. But come to us. 
you you get just a very slim opportunity for you to escape from Kenya today you'll be out of here the police themselves you know the police are the people that should embrace the nationality with so much love for their country but come to Kenya our police they think about how will I get 50 bob how will I get this and that's where this is what their leaders have sold to them we need, we need a leader that embraces and loves this country not a leader that loves their family alone you can love your family and love your country. But if you want to be successful as a leader, you have to put the life of the people that you rule first. Not even your family comes first. I shall doubt the Bible. When Jesus was preaching in a temple and he was in a temple, somebody came and called Jesus and told, them, and told him that your brothers and sisters are waiting for you outside. They want to talk to you. Your mother and your brothers and sisters are waiting for you outside. Jesus said, my brothers and sisters are those that embrace the word of God and follow it. Because Jesus loved the people that he ruled, the people of the kingdom of God. You get what I mean? That is Jesus for you. If you want to be a leader like Jesus Christ was, we all embrace Christianity, right? If you want to be a leader that Jesus Christ was, you have first to embrace your nationality and love the people that you rule. Because we believe, and rumor has it, that the Rubis company, the products and most of the companies that are owned by the Kenyatta, the whole, pro, the, the whole supplying companies in Kenya, that right now are owned by the Kenyatta family, they depended on the oil product that came from Trukana. That oil would have changed the life of the people of Trukana. But to go to Trukana right now, those are the places that we said they are bad in stricken areas. <laughs> what can we say? If we don't have leaders that embrace the nationality of this country, we shall live to be a state that is ruled by corrupt moles in government every day, selling to us agendas of fear and agendas of incompetence every day. I am not for any leader. I am for Kenya. And Kenya is our nationality. If a police officer cannot beat his chest and say that I'm proud to be a Kenyan, na jivunia kuwa mkenya, who is that citizen that will beat their chest and say that they are proud to be Kenyans? Only those that live in Karen, only those that live in Rwanda, only those that live in Westlands. No. We all should be proud of this nation. And if the government wants us to be proud of this nation. They must make us be proud of this nation by providing for the citizens of this nation, not making the life of the people of this nation hard. The man that discovered the crude oil in this country, Moai Kibaki, made it known to the public that his government had discovered a treasure for our nation. And he was ready to make this nation great. And he did everything in his power to make this nation great. But came the people who were eager to exploit. The young men that you chose saying that the government needs young men to make this nation a nation that is successful. You said that these people already had properties. So they did not come to steal from us or hang to you. They took everything that you had. And now that's why the nation is at the verge of collapsing. And that's why we urge President William Ruto, you have only had less than a year in this nation. Don't allow our nation to go to the dogs. Please establish this nation. Mm. The demonstrations are there and they will always be. But 
if Ruto won't laugh from this, the people of this nation, he must hunt it. He must hunt it by watching, not by the word of mouth. And that's what's up. My name is Felix Munda and this is the FM Update Show. Thank you for watching.